Peach isn't the only one that can be the master of no blinking contests. Oh, thank you, Mario, for everything you've done. We can go back to our peaceful way of life now. You know, son, now that we get right down to it, I'm kind of sad to see you go. I do love per pon pon whatever that word is, so come on by whenever you want to sit by and chat. Yes, please come back and visit when we'll for you. We work together from now on to prevent anything like that from ever happening again. Thanks for showing us how to stick together, Mario. Good luck with the crystal stars. Oh, this shan't be our last visit. Certainly not. But until then, ta-ta. See you, Mr. Mario. Bye-bye. Oh, the punies are all here to greet us. It's such a cool little scenery right here, just seeing them all hanging out outside the tree. As soon as you leave, they're going to all go back inside. But yeah, this is the only time you can see Jabble out here just hanging out. And he just hops up and down, which is very funny, but whatever. Now that that's taken care of, we could finally exit the Boggly Woods. However, there's some things we need to get. One thing I missed, and one thing that we could have only gotten with Flurries, not Flurries, but um, Mario's Ground Pound. So, time for some more backtracking! Hooray! I'll see you guys in just a moment. Oh, hello! Sorry about that, I forgot that we get emails from Peach and stuff. Oh, mercy me! Sounds like some mail. Here's the mail, it never fails, it makes you wanna wag your tail, when it comes I wanna wail. Dear Mario, I'm sure you're very concerned about me. And it doesn't have the same ring to it. Uh, but please know I'm fine, I'm actually more worried about you. The friends, the fiends who kidnapped me are searching desperately for the crystal stars. I'll try to learn what I can about them, I'll email again if I uncovered anything, okay? You must know I miss you, lately I've dreamt about our days back in the castle. I hope we'll spend carefree days again soon, Princess Peach. Isn't that precious, Mario? Oh yeah. Uh, seems that she doesn't care about Peach all that much. She knows that Peach ain't no competition, Flurry can handle her no problem, but seems Miss Mouse is a bit more of a threat to her or something like that. Okay, I see how it is. Uh, one thing that I guess I should be on the lookout for since it is a uh, part of my badge requirements. There is a hidden badge around here somewhere. Uh, under one of these things is a hidden block, and it has the uh, P down D up badge. It drops your damage your ally deals and receives by one. So, interesting. It makes it so, um, your partner will take less damage, but also they'll do less damage. So I guess if you have a party member that is good for healing, then it's good to have that equipped, but I don't really get it, so I'm not going to use it. There's the first strike with the ground pound that I wanted to show off. Get rid of him right off the bat, though he only has 3 HP, so I guess it wasn't completely necessary to use that. But it's still cool to show it off. Back over here at Flurry's house, there's something that we couldn't get before because we didn't have the ground pound ability, but now that we have it, we could go and get it. As well as this star piece that I accidentally missed, sorry about that. Back in Flurry's house, we never actually went into her room before, so now we can see the mysterious power of her room. Whatever that means. Uh, there's also a treasure chest here, I always forget that's here. The Super Appeal Partner Badge makes it so your star power will- you'll get more star power when your ally appeals. Which is interesting, I guess. There's a badge for literally everything in this game. If you can imagine it, then there's a badge for it. That sort of rhymed. And I like how it landed on her chair. A star piece inside her house. Very cool. And a very cool room, I must say. Got a lot of enemies right here, so I think this will be a good opportunity to show off our new star power, Clock Out. It immobilizes all enemies for a short period of time, which is very, very useful. Press A, B, or X whenever it appears over the enemy to tap that button. Uh, I don't entirely remember this one because I don't use it all that often, so let's see what we got. Uh, B! Uh, just press it, I guess. Uh, B, I- how do I get it over to them? I don't understand. It did nothing. It immobilized the audience? Are you serious? So- What? I had to press the button that was- okay, so I didn't even know it could immobilize the audience. I had to press the button that was on the enemy side of the field. I couldn't- I was pressing the one that was on my side of the field. I just barely ever used this attack, so I just never really remember how I'm supposed to use it, but whatever. It just makes them frozen for short periods of time, which would have been really helpful for this fight, but unfortunately, I messed up, and I can't appeal to the audience now because now they're all asleep. I didn't even know you could make the audience fall asleep. I thought it was just going to be neutral, but no, apparently not. Uh, so now I'm going to have uh, Mario appeal to the audience because I need to get my star power back up. And then I will have Flurry finish off this uh, Dark Puff. 
Well, it's been fun. This was a very beautiful area. Not my favorite chapter in terms of story, but it was still had a lot of funny moments, a lot of cool moments, uh, some elements I like about it. But most of all, I'm going to miss this place in terms of just its overall design because it is absolutely breathtaking to look at and I never get tired of it every time I come back here. Well, maybe we'll come back again someday, but for now, we are off to different pastures. Can't really say greener pastures because there's nothing better than this in terms of the pastures, but maybe in terms of the story, there'll be better stuff. I don't know what I'm trying to say. Let's just go on through here, back into the crummy town of Rogueport. How sad. But now that we have the ground pounded flurry with us, we have a lot of things opened up to us that we can do. For example, if you remember back at the beginning of the game, there was this little uh, tuft of paper that was tipping out over here. Go ahead and use Flurry to blow it away. And we get ourselves the Happy Heart Partner Badge. It gives uh, our partners one HP after every turn, which is nice, I guess. But I don't have the BP to do that. But I do have the BP to upgrade Sultan, because I forgot I just got that recently. So what are we going to equip? I think I'm going to finally equip that Power Bounce and... Uh, I have Quake Hammer and multi Bounce equipped as well. That's really cool. So, all my favorite badges are already equipped right off the bat. Which is very, very nice. Now we're just going to fly over here. I guess we'll go explore the underground of Rogueport later. But for now, since we're right next to the uh, Crystal Star location, we're just going to go ahead and uh, deposit it here and see where our next location is. Now, my little Mario, it's Crystal Star time! Jeez, the game really likes filling out the top right corner of the map or something like that. The location of Crystal Star has been recorded on our magical map. Oh, mercy me! The next Crystal Star has made an entrance! But, correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't it up in the sky? What does that mean? It means it's up in the sky, Flurry. That means that beneath this town, the thousand-year-old ruins remain intact! And that door has been sealed shut for a thousand years by the Crystal Stars! In order to open that seal, we have to muster the power of all the Crystal Stars. Perhaps I'm just daft, but why would they want to seal this treasure away at all? Did they not fear thieves and brigands? If not... Then what? No, that's not... Hmm? That's not what? I don't know! Frankly, please. I'm sorry, so sorry. I know that the treasure was sealed away around the time the town was destroyed. But the problem is, no one's even sure what it was that caused the town's demise. All that's written is this, darkness stole the sky and the cataclysm rained down. I must research this more, assuming we'll just make an, well, you know what the saying. Oh, yes. How inappropriate. In any case, what about the location of this crystal star that's floating on the map? Hmm, very interesting. Perhaps it's pointing to the floating town of Glitzville. Just perhaps, just, you know, a floating town. Nothing, no big deal. There's a stunning arena there where great warriors engage in furious battles. Ostensibly, families go there on vacation to lounge and enjoy the fights, but behind the scenes, the richest people in the world wager on the bouts. A floating city, you say? So are we just supposed to sprout wings and fly there, darling? Do tell. Uh, says the flying party member. A special blimp flies there. It departs from Rogueport several times a day. The problem is getting a seat. The only way to get a ticket is through the certain channels. Ooh, that sounds exciting. A little on the seedy side. Show me the way. 
Hmm, I don't know. Uh, I guess I we don't have much of a choice. Word on the street is all tickets go through Don Pianta on the west side. Head west to Rogueport's main plaza and you'll reach the west side of town. That part of town is under the control of Don Pianta, the Pianta Syndicate head. Apparently, Don Pianta makes pretty regular jounce, jounce over to Glitzville. Mmm, I like the sound of this Don Pianta fellow. I cannot wait to meet him. It may sound easy, but he's a syndicate boss, folks. The rumors about him are scary. And Don Pianta is a, reg is a recluse. Just getting an audience with him will be difficult. So we got our next objective. Now, if you see in the top right corner, you have the Sun, Mu Sun Moon Puny Star combination which was used for the Boggly Tree. I don't know why Frankly has it in his house, but whatever, just kind of a funny little Easter egg. Head on out here. And oh my God, Luigi's gone. The Chestnut King must have captured him. We must save him now. Nah, I don't care about Luigi. He could get captured for all I care. Uh, we have six Shine Sprites with us now, so we can upgrade Coops and Flurry, which is really, really nice. Now all of our party members will be at their ultimate power. Gonna go upgrade Coops. Shazibi! Shazubi! This reminds me of the Great Pico. Thankfully, it does not take nearly as long to get through as a session with the Great Pico. And Merlin sort of does look like the Great Pico now that I think about just sort of the same hunchiness, I guess. I don't know. Uh, care to power up more? Yes, indeed. We're gonna power up Flurry. Coops has 15 HP now. Yeah, his upgraded HP is the same as Flurry's regular HP, but he gets more defense, more offense, and a new move, which is Shell Shield. It gives Mario a shield that pro that protects him from damage, which is very, very nice. But for Flurry, oh, Serenia, spin around and all that jazz. She looks so excited. Oh, ho, ho. then you may go. She has 25 HP, which is really stinking awesome. And her ability is Lick Lop, which lets her suck out enemies HP and add it to her own, of course. A uh, very fitting move for her, but what are we supposed to do now? He said we could go to the west side. This is when you would have needed to uh, get that contact lens taken care of. If you don't, uh, if you haven't done it by now, then you would have to like, Go and ask for the contact lens, then leave the leave Rogueport and come back and have it appear in the shop. And why are you still here? Uh, this is my brother's shop. Sunday, I'd like to have my own shop. That'd be nice. But why are you still here? I thought you went back inside afterwards. Does not seem like it. Okay, whatever. Uh, always fun to read the graffiti bulletin board. Uh, X knots terrorizing Boggly Woods have been withdrawn. Just what was their motive? And on the back we see graffiti corner. Whatever happened to that guy's squishy? That squishy little puny guy. I miss him. Sniff. Toadette, the animal lover. Okay, great. Uh, Toadette is here apparently, but that's funny. But more importantly, uh, I can't believe I just said more importantly, Luigi. Anything related to that. But whatever, Luigi is here and he's got himself a friend. A fried blooper, it seems. Well, I went to Rumble Bump Volcano and got myself a marvelous gumbo. Gumbo. Oh my god. All Luigi's words just like are very weird tongue twisters. Like Rumble Bump Volcano and marvelous compass piece and all that jazz. And hello. Goomther the Goomba. Just gonna come on here on screen and he's gonna leave. Okay, see you, buddy. It was an incredible quest. There was danger and all sorts of adventuring. It was pretty nuts, so bro. Wanna hear what happened? It's a pretty long story. Sure. Hey, sounds good to me. Which part of my story do you want to hear, bro? Hopefully, you don't accidentally click on the one you already heard before. Let's go to the Rumble Bump Volcano. Well, like I said, it's a really long story, but here it goes. As soon as my ship docked on the Pudding Continent, I set out for the volcano. To reach the destination, I spent several days fording the dense jungle. Scary beasts were all over. More than once, I thought I was done for, bro. I may have screamed a bit to scare them off, you know, but as the fate would have it, a blooper came named Bluey, heard me shrieking, and found me in one town. Bluey was on a journey in, uh, of his own, and he joined me after hearing my tale. Now Bluey's a madman. Back in his hometown, they call him a white torpedo. Yeah, he's a tough guy. Anyway, he helped me fight the rumble of volcano. This place was all little about bubbling lava pools and eat that would make even the sun sweat. And the place was lousy with evil traps designed to protect the compass piece. The scariest one of all was this gigantic 100 foot tall statue that stomped around. Now the weakness of this giant statue bro was a red gem on its forehead. Now I could jump high but not that high enough to reach this sort of thing for my large shot. So I came up with the plan for Bluey to hit that weak spot. All you man I said. I waited for a pause in the statue's movements and hugged Huey up there. 
and Bullseye, the white torpedo saved the day! That jewel got whacked! It was a critical hit and the stone statue toppled and crumbled into pieces. Once that was done, it was an easy stroll to the room where the treasure was. Unfortunately, Princess Eclair was nowhere to be found. But I got another piece of the marvelous compass and put it into the base. Now the compass pointed west to Plumperbelly Village on the Strudel Continent. So I set sails once again and came back here to the Rogueport to recharge. That's what happened to me lately, but it'll be heading out again soon. Oh! Oh my gosh, I think I love the stories. If you want to hear what I've been up to, just come find me, okay? I'll be around. I find it really cool that Luigi actually has party members that join him, and they have questionable uh, things to say about him, I'll say that much. Hey there, I'm Bluey, and this guy's a total liar. Don't listen to him. You heard his story, right? Well, he did try to throw me, but he completely tripped. And what happens? I end up landing in lava. Lava, man! You think that feels good? Thanks to him, you can stick a fork in me. I'm well done. My pale skin's crispified. I'll never forgive this guy. I'm gonna make him pay if it takes my whole lifetime. That's the only reason I'm still hanging around with him. You'll pay, Luigi! My god, he's like plan plotting the murder of Luigi. That's the only reason why he's traveling with him. This thing is hilarious. Uh, but the all of Luigi's party members are so sick and weird and awkward and hilarious. I just love uh, getting to hear his stories and all those, also the party members. Just a very funny little extra. But, yes, how many coins do we have now? We could not afford the W badge, unfortunately, but we could go ahead and do some other things. There are a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of star pieces that we could find now that we have the ground pound ability, so... I'm probably gonna have to cut away and show you all those in Roport and Pedalburg, but first, before we start cutting away to a bunch of different places, let's show off the west side that we haven't shown off yet. Uh, we got ourselves a nice little fountain here. No, you cannot jump into it and have a bunch of piranhas jump out. They're not that cruel to you. Behind this pipe, however, is a star piece, which is very nice. Uh, we got this tiny little toad right here. I almost fell down that grate. Man, that was close. I know where that thing leads to, too. All too well, and I don't want to go there. So that gives you sort of a hint. If you use the paper thin ability, you could fall down here, but we'll do that later. Uh, we got ourselves the Piazza Parlor. There's a lot of stinking things that we need to go over. This thing is interesting. Uh, happy Lottie, Lucky Lottery Board. Uh, but bomb lottery rules, jackpot, all numbers match. Two, second prize, uh, three numbers match. Third prize, two numbers match. Fourth prize, one number matches. Today's winning number uh, is 1710. Are you a winner? I think you need to talk to this guy to get a lottery ticket first. Every day is a lucky day with the happy lucky lottery. With new numbers every day, this lottery is fun and exploding with excitement. I'd love to tell you more. Tell me more. Get lost. That's the way. Happy lucky lottery is the special. It's so special you can pick numbers. They might even match. They might. Can't read. Just buy your numbers here one at a time. Buy another if you change your mind. Blah, blah, blah. Get a lucky prize. I've never gotten a prize before. So basically, uh, when I say midnight, I mean according to your Nintendo GameCube clock. So yeah, it actually reads the clock on your GameCube to see when a day passes over. And every time a day passes, it goes ahead and gives you a new number. Only 10 coins for new customers. Sure, I'm in. A happy number, it is 4605, so we already lost, but it'll be, uh, we have to check right now to see if we won. We already know that we haven't, though. 1701, are you a winner? No. Sorry, it's an unlucky day, no matches today. But every day brings a new chance, so try it, think, try again, okay? Here's a consolation prize. We got a mushroom that we can't even carry. Uh, come again tomorrow! So every time you do that, you get ourselves a new lottery number, which is very nice. So we're gonna go ahead and heal real quick, so I can use up the mushroom. And get that one back. So, anything else we can do here? The Pianta Parlor is another series of mini games that we can do. Here's another shop on the west side that has a bunch of other things for you. And a star piece behind this trash can. A lot of things for us. We go in here. Uh, we have a Super Shroom, which heals 10 HP. The Volt Shroom, which we've seen before. The Dried Shroom, and for whatever reason, why would you want to buy that? Heals 1 HP. Uh, life Shroom, which uh, restores party members back to life with 10 HP. I wish I still had one, but Coops used it on the stinking way up to Hookdale's castle and I just realized flurry floats above behind the numbers I think it's like a graphical glitch or oversight on the developer side uh dizzy dial we've seen before and thunderbolt we've seen before uh these kitty boos I really like the design of them but in the Japanese version they actually have bunny ears and they're meant to resemble playboy bunnies so I guess you can see why they changed that uh we left flurry in there if we go in here into the pianta parlor what do you guys say the boss told me to look after this place. You do anything funny, I'll toss you like that. Okay, Piantas are crime bosses in this world, and originally they were all like all about that tropical life. Now they're about that mafia life, which is kind of funny. Uh, the Pianta Parlor, it's a place where you could play some mini games. Uh, welcome to the Pianta Parlor. Hey, hey, you're Mario, like the one and only. I know all about you. Res rescuing Princess Peach is important work, but even heroes need relaxation. 
So what can I do for you? Trade in winnings. I don't have any winnings, unfortunately. Uh, what we're supposed to do is... Uh, this place is run by Dan Pianta. You can play for fun games here and win Pianta tokens to redeem for prizes. Uh, we can't play if we don't have any Piantas with us. Uh, how you doing? What, me? I'm on the top of the world, baby. What's that now? You want to know how to get a member's card, do you? Well, let's see. Maybe if you help someone in trouble, they'll give it to you. Okay, I understand. I love checking this. Uh, my scores on this machine after playing games. I'm here all day. What, my family is worried about me? Oh, don't be silly. They don't mind. They're all so independent. They're happiest doing their lone little things. Okay. Uh, this, well, hello. This shows you the scores for all the games that you could play. We haven't actually been able to play them, and we still can because we need a member's card. Uh, you can actually use the paper thin ability to go back here and talk to her. And she has some actually pretty funny dialogue. Oh my, customers aren't allowed back here. What? You want to learn a little about more about me? Well, I'm in charge of the parlor center, silly. I know all there is to know about the place, so if you have a question, just ask. You were hoping to more personal information? Uh, ugh, fine, whatever. I'm 18, my favorite food is honey shrooms, the rest is a secret. If you get a high score in one of the mini games, maybe I'll tell you more. So that's sort of like a running joke thing. Every time you beat a high score in one of the games, you could go back here and get a piece of her backstory, which is kind of funny. Not sure why they did that, but it's a funny little extra that I like doing every time I play this game. But yes, anything else that we need to do around here? We need to find a way to Don Pianta. You're mainly just supposed to walk around with your new abilities and try and figure out how to get to him. Uh, but first we're gonna go down through these grates. And down here on the west side of Roadport, we can't get over there quite yet, but if we jump over here... Uh, well, I guess we should show what down here is real quick. And hello, there's a new enemy that we could show off. It is a Spiky Spinia, or rather, a Spania. I think it actually is called a Spania. Uh, let's see, it is, yep, a Spania. Uh, we just go ahead and hit them again. They're basically Spinias, but with spikes. Nothing really to say about them, but I gotta get this title log, so we'll switch to Goombella. Switch into Goombella, Bella, Bella, A, A, switch into Goombella, ouchies, why did that happen? I don't know, I don't care, let's just go ahead and tattle. That's a Spania, a Spania with spikes on its head, it looks meaner too. Max HP is 3, attack is 1, defense is 0, so it's sort of the same as a, span as a Spinia. You ought to watch out for the spikes on its head, but otherwise just wail on it. I gotta be honest though, the way that thing spins makes me want to yak. Okay, that's a funny word. Uh, just go ahead and jump on it. On the regular one, it's just a spike Goomba, but for the Spinia variety, nothing really much to say about it. And I can't get the guard, unfortunately, but I don't need no stinking guard, and I got the power of hammers on my side. Which still need to go a next turn. Whatever. Super guard! Super cut, super guard, super single start point. Great. Well, we got that and got some healing. That's nice. If you go back here, I believe there's a star piece for you, which is very good. Um, there's a save block right here. We don't want to use that. Let's see if I can get up there. Hit that guy. Uh, there's a red X right here. Can't really do anything about it right now, so we're just gonna ignore it. Uh, switch back to flurry and keep on exploring road ports underground. I don't want to make the episode too long, but I also don't want to gloss over anything that we could be doing right now. So go down here. The pipe on the right just takes you back up above ground, in case you're wondering. Uh, this, however, it's a different part of town. It looks very similar to the place that we were at before, but let's see if there's anything new for us. There is a thing we can blow away with Flurry. I said there's a thing we can blow away with Flurry. I don't think we actually... Oh, there's a pipe here. Interesting. And Flurry's just stuck back there. Can't do anything about that just yet. Uh, go over here, hit this block. Uh, ooh, uh, interesting mushroom. A slow shroom makes allies recover HP gradually for a brief period. Uh, we'll get rid of the regular mushroom. I really gotta shove all this stuff over to Tasty or Zesty so I could uh, get some room in my inventory. Gradual syrup makes allies recover FP gradually for a brief period. Get rid of the honey syrup. Get rid of the mushroom. Uh, let's see, there's nothing in these uh, areas right here. I think it's just for hiding, I guess. I don't know. Uh, in here, I believe if you go to the right, then it's a dead end, so we're not even gonna bother going over there. Instead, I'm just gonna go down, and hey, we've come full circle. It takes us to the Pit of 100 Trials. I guess before we go ahead and do anything else, now would be a good time to, uh, cut away around the entire world and show you all of the, uh, hidden star pieces that could be found with a ground pound. So, I'm gonna go and do a lot of cutting away, and I will meet you guys back once we have done so, alright? See you guys in just a moment.
And with that, those are all the star pieces that you could get through ground pounding for the time being. I know it's a lot of sinking and backtracking, but it was a heck of a lot easier than collecting blue coins in Super Mario Sunshine, that's for sure. <sighs> so, we still have no idea where the fruit this Don Pianta is. Well, uh, eventually you might come to realize that there are a couple footprints right here. And there's a little crack in the wall. Hmm, maybe we could go through here. Yeah, I remember when I discovered this for the first time. It was amazing. I was like, oh my god, I'm a game-playing god! I can't believe I just discovered this. It's amazing. I'm sure no one's ever gone past this point at any point in the entire universe. I'm the first person to ever get this far in the game. I felt so singing good about myself when I got this far. It was amazing. Uh, what do you guys say? Who, me? My name's Pierre. What I'm what's technically called a completely awesome thief. I used to work as a good geologist researching the rocks under town, but it paid nothing. That's when Ishnael, the boss of Robos, picked me up. I've since washed my hands of geology and am now an amazing thief. Ha ha ha. Okay, that's pretty interesting. Except not really, not in the slightest. Just want to make sure there are nothing in here. There's no things. There's a star piece. And there's one up there, but we can't get that one quite yet, but we'll just remember it for later. If we head in here, we see this cool looking snail dude, and oh, hey, it's Gus and his brother Gus that we beat up before. Very fun. Good times. You want something, chump? This is the fortress of Robo Thieves. You lost? What business brings you, a chump like you, to a place like this? Say it ain't a vacation. Ah, uh -huh. was that? You want to meet that lion cheat and steal no good jerk if it brains down Pianta? Real thieves like us end up poor as dirt, never catching a break because of that guy. Did you come here knowing all that? Uh-huh. And you know that scumbag demands protection money from us too, yeah? You know all that and you still want us to tell you how you can meet that scum? That crumb? Uh-huh. Bye, Mr. Insensitive Jerk, but it'll cost you 64 coins. And no budget on the price, not a single coin. Inside info is pricey, them's the breaks. Forget you, pal. What? Oh, fine, I get it, don't want to pay, huh? Fine, no pay, no way, I say. Come back when you're ready to stop being a cheapskate. Now, believe it or not, you don't need to actually talk to this guy. He does tell you what you need to do if you pay him 64 coins, but if you know what you're supposed to do from a previous playthrough or from looking it up on the internet, uh, you could go ahead and do it without paying him money. So if you want to save yourself some uh, coins, then you go ahead and just not pay him. And like a floor just flew into screen like that. 